So it's important when we're, when we're laying out our rucksack to think about priorities and order of need. What am I likely to need first? What am I likely to need quickly? What might I take a little more time on? Or, you know, just what do I need fast? What should be on these outside pockets? What should be in the bottom? What should be in the top? Really just go through setting up your camp and put things in that priority of need. Make sure that you, you get that right. Uh, compartmentalization on this particular Malice Pack by Tactical Taylor is awesome. It's one reason I love it. It's got a lot of these smaller outer pockets so that even in the dark, I've memorized this thing. If I need smoke, if I need, uh, you know, whatever, of course I wouldn't use smoke it after dark, but if I need cord, for instance, bam, I can get to it. So no, uh, no respectable rucksack would be complete without copious amounts of some type of cordage. Yes, I can make cordage out of plant fibers, but it, it takes lots and lots of time. So for things like uh, tying up our shelter sheets, making flotation devices, even traps, there's a lot, of, a lot of things you can do using your 550 cord for trapping game. So have lots and lots of that. Also, gill nets can be made from this stuff. There's just tons of uses. So I carry a pretty good amount of it. Uh, moving along, over here, as I've stated before, I'm not a fan of the, the water bladders. I do carry them at times, but I don't put all my eggs in that basket. I like a good old fashioned canteen. Uh, you're gonna need some type of metal container. And in this case, I have a titanium cup, which is about the right size for one person. You know, I can, I can boil and have boiled a lot of water, teas, medicines, things of that nature. We mentioned uh, food procurement. What we have here is just a general purpose net. It doesn't have any of the lead weights in it or, or other parts that come with some of the nets. And the reason for that is I'm trying to cut weight every chance I get. So I just get to a, a place, I wanna set this up. The grid size of this net is small enough that, uh, that you can capture little fish as well as big fish because when you're out there for survival, anything you get will have a cumulative effect. Throw it all in the pot, boil it up, you're good to go. Uh, gill nets are illegal. I, I want to say that in most areas. So unless it's an actual survival situation, you would be violating laws. So I'm not advocating breaking any laws. Don't do anything in your area that's illegal. But this has a lot of uh, potential. This will work for you while you're asleep. Set that thing up. Uh, even the bag, uh, I've used these before, make a hoop out of a stick to hold the opening uh, in a circular fashion like that. And then you've got a dip net that you could use for frogs and minnows and other small things. You know, make a long shaft, move it in the water slowly, and you'd be surprised what that little bag could capture for you. So use all of this to your advantage. And if you wanted to camouflage your shelter, you could truss this up over the shelter, sprinkle leaves into it, and make it look just like the ground around it. So tons of good uses for a net. Could be a hammock if you're into that kind of thing. The older I get, the more my back hurts. I just don't like hammocks anymore, but uh, you, could, you could certainly use that as a hammock. In this pill bottle, I have encapsulated it with some tape. I've already got a built-in tab, so in cold weather I can grab that or with gloves on. Basically inside of here, hooks, weights, floats, tender, razor blade. In case I lost my knife, I could take that razor blade, clean fish and gang with that. Very lightweight option. I've got some cotton tender in there. Uh, everything you might need, some snare wire for trapping. And then of course, lots and lots of cordage. And inside of here are yet more hooks and floats. And I'm usually not going to man these things. I'm going to set them up. I'm going to go do something else. And I'm going to let that stuff work for me. I'm not going to be sitting there holding a fishing pole because that ties me to that spot. I need to set multiple ways to get food. Usually about a 10 to 1 ratio. If I set 10 traps and 1 snaps, then good. You know, I have that. I have something that I can eat. Uh, again, on the outside pocket, things that uh, we might want to get to. Just a general purpose Shimog. This particular one comes to us from Five Star Gear, a sister company to TrueSpec. You see the size of this thing. You know, I'm, I'm six foot six, so this thing's like six feet long to my nose is six feet. 
Lots of first aid applications there. Lots and lots of things we could do with it. But what's most remarkable about it in a uh, cold weather situation, unlike the cotton shemogs, uh, this will dry out. It doesn't hold the moisture the same as cotton does. I've, I've had cotton shemogs in cold weather, wet environments, and they just stay wet and cold and miserable the whole time, where this could actually be used as a garment and other things because it will dry. It's a poly blend. So good stuff there. And it's on the outside so that it can be reached quickly to use for a first aid application if I needed to. Also like uh, the old sniper veil type of shemog. Lots of uses here again. I have caught small fish with these things and it has kind of a, a coarse texture because of the grit in it. So I generally use this to bathe with, just wet it and it exfoliates. It takes the top layer of skin off and keeps you fresh and yummy looking. So that's important to have. Plus it breathes like in hot weather. Uh, it'll, it'll keep the sun from blistering your, your face and your neck and that air can pass through there so that you're not losing water, you know, through perspiration. It weighs nearly nothing, so why not carry that? Oh, look, more cord. A saw, uh, probably one of the most important things that you could carry. We always think in terms of knives and axes, things like that for survival. Uh, think about a saw, saw equals stealth, okay? If I'm in an area and I don't want to advertise the fact that I'm in there building a shelter, a hide site, whatever the case may be, constructing traps, that, that low tone zzz, 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 does not carry as far as whack, 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 chop. You know, you've heard people chopping and it carries for miles. So a saw is more stealthy. That's one advantage to a saw. Uh, secondarily to that, I would say that unless you're really adept at using an ax or some type of cutting implement, you're less likely to injure yourself grievously with a saw. Whereas one mislit with an ax and you're probably going to have to go to the ER if that's even a possibility for you or bleed out or need a tourniquet. So don't create your own tragedy. Carry a saw. Fire kit. If you use dry bags, they come in a lot of different colors. So it's pretty good to uh, color code these guys. And again, it adds to the buoyancy of my pack if I encapsulate things inside of, uh, of these dry bags. So I have a water filter in there with duct tape, which if I can light duct tape, it's got a pretty good burn rate on it, or at least this type of tape does. Inside of here, I carry some magnesium shavings on a piece of tape so that they don't go flying all over the place in the wind. I carry a piece of fat wood and then we have this, this fire starter with the hacksaw blade inside of it. Really big, really easy to operate when your hands are cold, when you're wearing gloves and things like that. So this is what gives me my actual spark and this is actually more portable tender in the form of magnesium. So really good fire system and it, it doesn't weigh much at all. 